The Bering Sea asteroid blew up in the atmosphere, but the Beringer Crater asteroid hit the ground intact with its full force. Why do different asteroids behave differently? And what will Apophis do when it heads our way? Arecibo's radar may have the answer. When we bounce radar waves off of these objects, we can get effectively imagery of the surface of, of some of these small objects uh, that we just cannot do with optical telescopes. This is the radar image of Apophis. It's so far away that all they could image were a few pixels. So this is our most recent radar image of asteroid Apophis. And you can see it's only a few pixels, but it does give us information on what it actually is. These few pixels are enough to work out how big Apophis is. From this image, we can constrain the size to be about 1,000 feet, which is about the same size as the Arecibo radio telescope. All of that from a weird bunch of pixels. <laughs> Knowing the size and mass of an asteroid is critical to understanding what an asteroid is made of. If we have the size and the mass, we get the density. If we have the density, we know what it's made of. Rock has some density, metal has a different density. So we can determine a huge amount about the asteroid simply by pinging it with radar. Arecibo's data reveals that not all asteroids are alike. There's not just one kind of asteroid. There are actually several kinds. And this is important to understand because they behave differently. They behave differently if they impact us, and they behave differently if we're trying to prevent them from impacting us. We need to know what these asteroids are made of if they're going to hit the Earth because that drastically alters the potential effects. Asteroids come in different shapes, different sizes, and different compositions. And we think that is because they are the leftovers of planet formation. To understand how each asteroid formed and their threat level, we have to go back 4.6 billion years to the start of the solar system. The reason that there are all these asteroids floating around in our solar system today is just because of the early violence of the solar system as it was forming. At the birth of the solar system, the sun ignites, leaving a disk of gas and dust. Slowly, over time, planets form. Lots of planets. The early solar system was a messy place. There were a lot more planets, a lot more forming planets. They would crash into each other, they would merge, they would disintegrate, they would reform. This process of accretion, of building planetary worlds, was not just, you know, kind of gentle and happy, it was, it was violent. It was like a giant cosmic game of pool, planet smashing into planet. The leftovers from this violence formed a ring of junk between Mars and Jupiter. And now we call that junk asteroids. They're just basically rubble left over from the formation of the solar system. Rocky leftovers became C-type, or chondrite, asteroids. They're quite dense, so big ones can punch through the atmosphere and hit the ground. Radar reveals a rarer type of asteroid. Some of them really stand out because their density is so much higher than the rest of the other asteroids. These asteroids are M-type, or metal. Because their mass is great, they carry more kinetic energy during a strike. By far the worst one is this iron meteorite. This is really heavy, so the difference, if you were being hit by this, it would be the difference between being hit by a rock and being hit by a metal hammer. We think that both the Behringer and the KPG dinosaur killer 
were caused by metal asteroids. But there's another, more mysterious type floating through space. December 2018, NASA's spacecraft OSIRIS-REx approached the near-Earth asteroid Bennu. Over time, it drifted out of the main asteroid belt, made its way into the inner solar system until it became a near-Earth asteroid accessible for our spacecraft to go and visit. OSIRIS trained its camera on Bennu. One of the biggest surprises on arrival at Bennu was the large number of large boulders on its surface. Bennu is really littered with huge boulders and littered with medium-sized boulders and littered with small boulders. Bennu is not a solid lump of rock. It's made up of thousands of bits of rock forming what we call a rubble pile. These asteroids aren't big singular spherical balls of rock, but rather they're literally piles of rubble. There are all sorts of pieces and fragments from another asteroid that had previously been disrupted that have all come back together and formed literally a pile of rocks held together by their own gravity. We think rubble piles formed from collisions inside the asteroid belt. Each impact blasted bits off. Then, over time, they came back together to form a loose pile of rocks. Imagine taking a big cosmic dump truck full of, of, of gravel and rubble and dumping it out there into space and letting gravity weakly hold it together. When scientists probed deeper into Bennu, they found another surprise. It's full of holes, like Swiss cheese. If you could slice open one of these asteroids, you'd see there are a lot of voids. And in fact, 60% of what we're looking at is a void space. So they're actually really fluffy. So even though they're made of rocks, they're sort of the lint of rocks. Bennu helps us understand Apophis. Radar data shows that Apophis is also a rubble pile. If you look at Apophis, we really want to know how its orbit will evolve in the future. What we learn at Bennu about similar sized rubble pile asteroids might help us understand the future of an asteroid like Apophis. So what would happen if the rubble pile called Apophis hits Earth? You probably don't want that to hit you still, but it definitely makes it a lot weaker than something like a solid rock or even more, a chunk of nickel iron metal. Does its composition make it any less of a threat? A rubble pile like Apophis is especially unnerving because we don't know when it interacts with the atmosphere if it's going to stay as one solid piece. Will it break up? When these rubble piles start interacting with planets, if they fly near a planet, they can get pulled apart into all of their little pieces. Or if they enter the atmosphere of a planet to impact the surface, they might slowly get pulled apart as they enter the atmosphere and and end up being an array of little impacts instead of one big single impact. But what would happen if these impacts occur at sea? Will our oceans save us or will a giant tsunami wipe us out? <laughs> 